everyone, Gareth here and welcome to the fifth episode of my Beat the Leather series and I'm very proud to announce you that I got rank 1 legend with this list and in this episode I'm going to feature Shaman once again and there's a reason for me featuring Shaman. There's two reasons actually. Uh, first reason, the name of the series is Beat the Leather and to beat the leather right now, the best class to beat the leather is Shaman and I got to rank 1 legend and for me this makes me really happy so you guys know that with this guides that I'm like performing myself relatively well in case you don't know me from the past uh, from 2014 or 2015 if you're new to Hearthstone that you see that if I put my mind and uh, enough work into it that I can beat the ladder. So in this episode I'm going to feature this specific list and without further ado let's just jump right into it. Let's kick this off with with the same cards that I featured in the first episode, actually in the second episode. In the first episode I featured Priest, which was the worst class to ladder with, and I got Legend with Priest, and in the second episode I climbed to Top 100 Legend with Shaman. And I want to talk about the changes in this Shaman list compared to the Shaman list that I was using before. So, Double Lightning Bolt, Spirit Cross, Tunnel Truck, and Talnos. This is the standard core package for midrange shaman and you would play those cards or i would play those cards in every single midrange shaman list just because those cards are just very powerful have insanely good synergy together and there's no drawback putting those cards in your deck except maybe playing tunnel truck in the mirror is oftentimes not that powerful or if you play against a lot of warriors tunnel truck also seems to not be that powerful but overall it's one of the best one drops you can play in the game and you play a lot of overload cards in the deck you play the double storms the double spirits and the double lightning bolt so it is just worth to play this card overall and it is a curved deck that ends on turn turn five pretty much um, Thunder Buffer Line is oftentimes not a turn 5 play, oftentimes you play him on turn 7 to combine it with the Inspire in fact. Um, but you get where I'm saying, like cutting Tunnel Truck, which is one of the best one drops from a curve deck, doesn't seem so smart, even though the card is not that powerful in many matchups. If you don't get the Snowball Effect, Spirit Claws on the other hand are insane to preserve the board, to protect the board, to gain tempo from basically turn 2, turn 1 onwards. It's a 1 mana Warrex with 3 charges pretty much in this deck. So the Thanos to have the spell power. Thanos was already played before. I already explained that in the first beat the letter series. Thanos was already very powerful in Shaman and he just got so much buffed with the Spirit Claws, with the Maelstrom Portal and the Double Storm that it is in my opinion core right now. Flankton Totem great card also another reason why we play the tunnel truck just to have another possible turn to follow up play to the tunnel truck which is not totem golem it's it's nice to have something on one mana so you can play the flamethrower totem in curve to buff the tunnel truck to a free free minion which is the best you can get pretty much for one mana cobalt geomancer this is like the different card and i used to play around with cobalt geomancer in the past i used to play one i had no real reason why to cut the Geomancer besides it's a Cobalt Geomancer it's a 2 mana 2-2 two -two. like it, it can't be right uh, but it, since Amnesia is playing the Cobalt Geomancers also in uh, in at BlizzCon uh, it really motivated me to play them again uh, I'm not right now 100% sure if the sweet spot is to play 1 Geomancer or 2 Geomancer the card is obviously really bad against control decks but you're not really facing many control decks on ladder so uh, this is why it's fine right now. It really depends what you're facing. Uh, yeah, if you play, face too many druids, if you, if the meta slows down, too many control warriors, humans is a really bad card. I would go down to one or even zeros. This is why I also play like the other deck uh, because I fa was facing a, a little bit more control decks like Reno Locks and in, in those matchups, cuts like Bloodlust, Barnes and Ragnaros are really good. But right now I'm facing a lot of mirrors, a lot of hunters. Tempo Mages, Zeus, and against those decks, the Geomancer is a really, really powerful card. Maidstrom Portal, absolutely core, nothing to say there. It's just a power power creep up from the Arcane Explosion with a huge upside. You can get a Tunnel Truck from it, you can get a 2-4 in, Injured Qualdia from it, a Flame Imp. 
Possessed Villager, you name it, it's just a very very powerful card for 2 mana and a great synergy with all the, sp the spell power totem. Spell power totem has so much synergy with the entire deck. Just the totem being a totem is already synergy. Totem Golem, great follow up for Tyrant Turk, also a core card. Agent Horse Rider is a, or Argent Horse Rider is a one off. So since Tunnel Truck got, um, Tusker Totemic got nerfed, sorry, uh, we, we are lacking a little bit of free drops in the deck. Uh, just replacing uh, Tusker Totemic with the Mana Tide is not really the same purpose. Tusker Totemic could just high roll and provide you a free 2 on the board. Mana Tide, on the other hand, is like very defensive. You try to protect the Mana Tide to get card quality. You don't really want to play it on free very often. In very few matchups, you really want to do that. And Horse Rider is really good in the mirror. It's like another great card. So this deck is really pushed to be good in the mirror. And yeah, Mana Tide is great and, and so, but against other Shamans, it's so nice oftentimes to have the Argent Horse Rider to combine it with the Flame Tongue Totem to take out like a Mana Tide, whatever, a Flame Tongue Totem, and a Zoot Drake against Rogues as well. It's very nice also to just kill a Spell Power Totem from the opponent. Um, yeah, it's just nice, very, very flexible card, also against Hunter, it's just, for the meta, I think it's a great tech card. Feral Spirits, as I said, very nice with the Tunnel Truck to protect your totems, like Flame Tongue Totem. The Hex, just the best removal in the game. Lightning Storm, some people play one, I think it's core to play two right now, just because of the popularity of Shaman. I, first I faced 31.2% Shamans in this month. That is a lot of shamans, so one third of my opponents are shamans, and if I play shaman myself, I have to be tech to beat the mirror. Mana Tide, just a great card, great synergy with the thing from below and from above all and it's just a very powerful card, draw, card in general. Azure Drake, just insane synergy with the entire deck, and it was already very good in Midrange Shaman before. Harrison Jones, I decided to cut my second Mana Tide for the Harrison Jones, just because Harrison Jones is very good in the meta right now. A lot of shamans, as I mentioned, a lot of warriors, and yeah, it's very hard without Bloodlust, without Ragnaros, without Barnes to beat another warrior, actually. So I decided, I, I, I got frustrated and I decided to cut uh, my Mana Tide for the Harrison, and this is the first card you would cut, a card draw card for another card draw card. And Druid, for example, it hurts your Druid matchup a little bit, but Druid is already your best matchup, so it is fine to just have like this additional body. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thunder Buffer Line, I think from below. Core, no super late game. Just a very clean list. H super high chance to uh, draw a very strong early game. And this is pretty much what you want. Um, yeah, just get a good start. Win the board control by like turn 3 or 4. Even if you don't, you have very high comeback. Uh, mechanics with the geomancers like guaranteed spell power past storm so I really guys I really hope you guys enjoy this special episode of beat the ladder and see you guys in part 2 where I show you some high legend gameplay with commentary and as always link to a complete mulligan guide is in the description and if you guys enjoy this video give me a like and don't forget to subscribe and see you in part 2 Alright, let's go. Silver gun. You don't mulligan against um, or, um, handlock. Like, if you would play against handlock, we could just keep hex and. I mean, reno lock. We always have to mulligan for zoo and then play against reno lock when it's reno lock. Because the other way around, if you mulligan for reno lock and he is zoo, we just lose the game. Like keeping a mana tide against Zoo is just super bad. So the Cobalt Geomancer Maelstrom would be good if he is Zoo. <laughs> Next time we could coin out the Horse Rider. I have to bolt. I just it's clean. I don't take the damage. It's pretty bad that I lose to horse rider, but he will probably just play more stuff. You know, there's always a target I can kill with the horse rider. So that's annoying. That's also annoying. Um, I will definitely coin out the totem golem here. 
I was thinking about even coining out the Maelstrom portal because it kills one half of the possessed villager and deals some damage to this guy and I don't overload and I can finish it off next turn so he got lucky RNG here which is really good for him that's like an insane 2 mana card you can imagine spawner 3-3 three, three for 2 mana for 2 mana 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 yeah, pretty bad for me. Yeah, that is just this is exactly what uh, Zoo needs to actually have a chance. And he, it's not looking pretty. This is also insane. Gets a perfect Arcus curve. So the Maelstrom Geomancer does pretty much nothing, the Charger does pretty much nothing, I can I can overload for 2, so I can play the Horse Rider, finish this guy off, this is like the strongest power play, whenever I don't have very good answers to the board, I always tend to just go for the power play, and for 4 mana I play a 3-3, Trog plus the 2 wolves. it's like Power play wise, the best thing. Maybe later the Geomancer will still be good, and I might even draw another Geomancer or like a Troc, um, a Talnos, so I might get value. So I would drop low, definitely. Like a fast Doomguard would be just super bad for me, I don't have a Hex. Like if you go, would go Doomguard here and has another Totem Golem, this is GG. So he went for Doomguard 5, which is super powerful. But he lost, um, the only upside here is, I mean, uh, the only positive thing here is that he used up um, all his resources. So if he gets another Doom God, this would be bad news. He still has to, like, deal with my board and stuff. This is like the best top. Oh my god, I hate when this happens. Like when people draw so well, it's like a chain of insanely positive draws. <sighs> Alright. I mean, the thing is, I'm a 10 life, right? If as soon as he gets the second Doom Guard. If he has good gets doom guards and, and, and soul fires, this is bad news. And I am forced to take some more phase damage. So I'm in a really bad spot here, being that low in life. And he hasn't played the free drops yet. Oh this is not the start. Okay. This is good for me if he doesn't discard. Yeah, this is Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, how many totems did I play? Not too many, unfortunately. Gotta trade this guy and get rid of this pesky little minion. So we have the guy for next turn, which would be good. So we need to dodge Doomguard this turn. Because we died to Doomguard so far. Yeah. Okay. I will try to avoid phase damage as much, as much as possible. It's also nice for next turn, so we'll set up the taunt here and get rid of the. I don't want to take phase damage here. I have another claw in hand, so I want to go phase as well, set up my own lethal. Alright, pretty nice comeback. Oof. Starting to sweat. So we're facing a shaman mirror here. Wait, is this the same guy? It's the same guy, he counters new snipe me of shaman. Interesting. Might be crusher shaman then. Well my shaman list is very good in the mirror. 
so maybe it doesn't know so this is bad if you have totem golem because I have to trade two minions into killing like to kill it if he goes totem golem I would just like uh, play totem and pass and then play another totem on free and then bolt it pretty much I have two things from below so I have to value toteming up very highly the tone totem is pretty nice because it protects my truck in case he has the Thanos so right now just toteming up is completely legit if he goes for totem golem I am forced to go for the Dumancer into bolt so he goes for the fast spirit wolves he might even hit this no so I'm overloading already so it's it's fine to just play the totem golem as well I would say so I might go he coined out so he cannot play spell power next turn but what he can do is uh, bolt I actually like the totem golem here positioning it in the middle go for the double overload get rid of the board pretty clean play and he's overloaded so he cannot do anything next turn I will most likely just tot him up get those two things cheaper now he hits it pretty pretty late I would have hit it last turn I don't like to be greedy in that spot toteming up very important he'll tot them very nice plays around the maelstrom makes basically his charge being wasted as well And yeah, I mean it's very hard even if he would know my hand he would also like give up I just had the very very I, I, I think the biggest key point in this match was rolling the tone totem to protect my trog and then being able to deal with his um, spirit wolves very effectively so I don't have to overextend the board at all at any point and it's very hard for the other shaman to come back even if he has a lightning storm in hand, if he doesn't have a spell power, it's, it's just gonna be very hard. He considered too early because you can get back in crazy situations with Shaman. Uh, but yeah, he was regardless in a pretty bad spot. A hunter. He will hunt me down. Just mulligan for one mana cards, totem golems. Pretty simple. When I go first, obviously you want to always go first, and both players want to go first in this matchup. It depends. If he doesn't run one drops, going having the coin is pretty nice for him. I think the hunter benefits more from having the coin than the shaman. I'm just gonna totem up. Even if I get the spell power, I will not go face. I like to untot them. Protects my mana tide, potential mana tide next turn. Um, yeah, this one doesn't do anything yet. He might have the um, Houndmaster, which is super annoying. So I'm even considering to hit this guy. What I can also do is just go the flame dog totem, get rid of it with the claws. He has the coin, so we have to expect it. Hmm. But I will get two draws from the mana tide, so maybe that's tempting as well. And he might not have it. Like most people run only one hunt master. So it will be like 25% or so that he has it. It's definitely scary. I mean he would play the like the the grandmother in any case. Like regardless. So let's see how many. Just one spell. Could be a snipe. Could be a sniper, you know. Mm, difficult spot very sticky board the huntress is super annoying didn't get the spell power Let's see if it's snipe It's not snipe. Ok. 
could be explosive cat trick I don't wanna trigger explosive here so give me the draw that's a very important draw because this guy really relies on having a lot of bow charges see the high roll this can actually win him the game if he gets a high min here oh, that's not bad oh that's a good one it can be a cat trick I like the storm with the geomancer It is the cat trick. How much do I like to hit his face here? I think I wanna save the weapon. Played quite a few totems this game. I, I have a lot of life. And that's Geomancer is scary, so he definitely has to clear stuff. If he goes for Hans, it's... We really want to draw a Hex if he goes for... A... If he plays Barnes, he plays High Mains. So that would give me a huge tempo advantage. He doesn't coin out the uh, High Main, that's good. He hasn't drawn many secrets. So he played one cat trick as well. Definitely an interesting game so far. So I have 4 mana next turn, I can play Totem, Golem and Totem and play Fiend from below, which is crazy, crazy tempo. If he goes Bow, um, I could not kill it. Is he really gonna kill the spell points that? That would be so insane. But you gotta kill the mana tight. He would get punished by Maelstrom too much, so I can definitely see it. This is very nice, but we have to hex the high man. If I would, if this would be a, st uh, a spell power, that would be nuts. Then I would just go for the this guy. Mana tight still rolling. Another geomancer, really good. Guaranteed spell power. Does this matter? I mean, if he has unleashed, this definitely matters. So I pretty much know he doesn't have unleash in hand. That's very nice information. That's a good one. Zero mana five five. Like cannot ever complain about that. I think I can take the hit. Actually, I should go for the small one and save the storm if he has. And um, it's really sick. And save the storm in case he has um, Call of the Wild. I still have so much life, so I can play another one. I have the Harrison for the Eagle Humble. Just the high man. Just gonna tempo hex. Twelve damage. Uh, but this is pretty much game over. the climb is real he's so low ranked that he didn't even give me a rank on rank 10 oh man I would have lost a lot of ranks to this guy so we have druid here druid is weird I think weird describes druid the best Maelstrom is nice if they go for the turn one roots very often they do that um, I don't wanna keep it if I don't have something like uh, a truck something to protect 
Cl because I'm mulling it for spirit claws just does the same thing, you know, if he goes living roots, I just chop them down, protect my totem. But if they don't go the living roots, sometimes I just keep the... You know, it's still value. I take some phase damage, but it's still okay for me. Because then this means the living roots is not gonna kill something bigger in combination with spell power or um, it is not going to uh, hit my face for 7 with the Maligos. I don't like coining out the Feral Spirits. Actually, very often I get punished just by playing the Spirits. Like then he goes Fendral into Innovate Wrath and then I'm pretty screwed because I only have 2 mana. Um, here I like the Feral Spirits because um, I have the coin, access to the coin blood mage, which can basically kill anything. And I wanna overload now, not overload later. I only have one charger, so I play around Harrison as well. <sighs> He's high ranked, so if I win this matchup, I will. So there's the infamous Fenrir, Innovate Ref. No, Innovate Ref. They always go for the Fenrir. Um, So now I have some decisions to make. Um, if I sacrifice, if, if it's better to sacrifice a minion or if it's better to sacrifice like the coin, um, like the minion or a coin plus lightning bolt. If I coin lightning bolt, I cannot play the Thunder Buffer line next turn. Like right now I can trade. I wanna play this because it's harder to remove it. I think I go for the for the wolf trade. So I have the options for lighting spell power lighting bolt. Don't overkill it by too much. Spot is already annoying enough. He might just, you know, just kill this and then I play the Thunder Buff aligned. And if he doesn't have a mulch, it's gonna be so hard to kill it. And then I have like potentially even double spell power to uh, just try to protect it. I have two storms. I prefer like if I would play the Thanos over the Trog, it's very likely he will just swipe. So definitely, I play into my game plan just play the Thunder Bluff. It's very difficult for the Druid to to get rid of it. Can just play it. I would not be surprised if he just goes Emperor here. Oh, Innovate. Oh my god, this is gonna be huge. Oh, baby. That is insane. So. I mean, I should be getting the spell power, right? Yeah. Yeah, not having a board anymore kind of sucks. Um, oh, if he has Harrison, I would get wrecked. I want to save the... Maybe I should have used the charge. I really want to value the coins, but I would lose to a Harrison. Like, I cannot just... Most druids just don't play Harrison. I don't think that's too smart, but that's just how it is. I have to kind of value my Blood Mage. I hope he goes, like, innovate my Keeper into more minions. That would be... A exactly what I want. It's a, it's a difficult spot here because he's, the longer the game goes the more he's in favor. He has better card draw, he has better direct damage, he has better big minions. Awkward once again. I don't really want to like waste the Thanos, looks like I have to play him. I mean I will do the free damage, I'm a bit scared. Harrison would just out win him the game, so can deal nine damage. It's my last clause, so I wanna like um, value the charges. But yeah, that moon can hold it. Smoking smokes. I like. I basically won the game already, and then he played. Wow, another I know it plus your power. That's insane. That is actually insane. My two storms don't do anything. I have zero draw. I don't have a hex. I took already 11 damage. 
this is pretty much as bad as it gets. This is this are one of those games where Dory just wins, you know. I mean, I can hope that you know I get lucky. I I mean I I am not dealing with the rack here at all. I need this rack to hit my face. Oh boy. A hex would be nice, it's not too late. I need a hex, it's not too late. I need a hex, it's not too late. My double storm is just so bad in this matchup. Hex, and we're back in business. Nope. No lucky. Need my Azure Drake to stick and then go for double storm next turn. I hope he doesn't have more removal. Just play some minions. If my Azure Drake sticks, the one one totem is really bad. It dies again to a swipe. If he has another swipe, I'm pretty screwed. I, I can only hope that he... Oh my god. <laughs> ah, this is getting so worse. I need some nice Ragnaros. Kill the one on totem, please. Face. Is this good or bad? So if double storm, I can push my truck to 5 damage. 5, 9, 10, 13 damage. I'm actually close to lethal even. Alright, I need to ho roll the spell power. Alright, this might be something. I might be just dead, you know, to a... I mean, I don't have a taunt. Six roll on this guy. It's, it's, it's freaking scary. I mean, I cannot take any phase damage anyways. Anymore. Alright. He, I'm dead to a lot of cards. Living Roots is one of them. Hmm, feels bad, man. I was actually pretty close, man. If that Rack would have killed the 1 1 totem, I would have won this game. So welcome guys to part 3 of this video and as always I'm going to show you guys my stats. These are the final stats of my climb to rank 1 legend and those are the stats of today. My stats for um, the past 24 hours were 38 to 7 which is 84.4%. And the past twelve, the past twelve hours or so, I went ninety-two percent. So this was my final push to rank one. I lost rank one, a, like a couple hours ago, and then I went for it again. So my total stats are twelve and one. So, uh, what is there to say? I wish I could show you my tracker board because I have a larger sample size of 45 games as I said but yeah even with 35 games I'm at 85% win rate which is really really high. Uh, here today I faced three druids, druids is my best matchup, hunter, I have actually three matchups where I'm 100% which are rogue, paladin, mage, I'm 10 and 2 in the shaman mirror and this is very very important to point out. Um, I'm, I'm taking right now the stats from the larger sample size, but you can still look in those stats from today. And yeah, that I'm very, I, I play the Shaman Mirror extremely well. Like I studied it exactly what I have to do. And you guys helped me out as well in the first um, beta letter series. Uh, where I featured Shaman, or the, like the second episode, I posted it on competitive Hearthstone subreddit and we talked about, I don't know if you guys remember, but some of you guys, it would be awesome if some of you guys would be watching this video as well. So we were discussing the mulligans of the Shaman in the mirror and you know, I always like to read those comments and think about it, self-reflect myself, how I can improve the whole 
all the time I'm just thinking about how I can improve myself, push my win rates to the max, play those decks perfect. And I really believe that right now with the York and the Tusca Totemic being nerfed, that you can get really good win rates in Hearthstone with just playing the game absolutely perfect. So I'm 84% in the mirror. My worst matchup is Hunter with 70% win rate. So my worst matchup in the last yeah, three days or so was 70%. Uh, this is really really good. This is what you kind of need uh, when you go for rank 1 legend It doesn't have to be that good, but then you just have to compensate with just more uh, games played uh, Very very rarely you will have um, states uh, Will have you will have the game to be a state in a state where you get this high win rates and I think the charm is just very powerful right now and the meta is very fitting so I was achieving this one. I will use this deck also for climbing to Fast Legend next season. This one and the Zoo deck that I featured. And yeah, this is it for this episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please uh, help me out. It doesn't cost you anything. My goal for this year is to, be, to reach 5,000 subscribers and it's going great. You guys says feedback is just insane i really appreciate all the positive comments and i'm reading all of it and i answer most of it and i hope you guys enjoyed this episode and see you guys next time peace